your man Maloney in the place to be, Breaking Records Radio, and I got a very special guest on the phone with me right now. We got Lex, the Hex Master, in the place to be. What's up, y'all? What's up? How the fuck are y'all doing out there? Hey, we good, man. We real good. How you doing, man? I'm chilling, man. I'm ready for this motherfucker energy. Oh, say word, eh? Yeah, I fucking, uh, last time we were in New York, actually, earlier this year, um, we went out to, uh, shoot a music video down, like, uh, Battery Park area and ended up getting caught out in the pouring rain. Well, you got some videos. You guys, you guys ever heard of Real Wolf? Pardon? You ever heard of Real Wolf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real Wolf's the homie, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did a couple of times for him. Oh no shit! I didn't even realize. I, I should have figured you guys would know each other because he he you know just the pocket of music that you guys both do. But I never even uh, thought twice about that. What are you? What are you? Yeah, in, man. Uh, no, 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 I'm still homie, man. Real good dude, man. Yeah, man. Right. Those are those are the homies right there. Tom's a good friend of mine. Right. Yeah, man. How? What? What have you guys worked on in the past? too i've heard that shit too i and i'd never even yeah while prepping for this interview i didn't even make the correlation in my head but i heard that joint actually yeah that's dope yeah, man. that's gonna have to be a badass fucking record man word yeah shout man out that line and shout out to motherfucking rusty jokes and the whole duck down word word up man speaking of which uh you know with the duck down uh, that's actually how this interview came to be. I know we were just talking before we started the interview, but uh, you you'd caught uh, wind somehow of my interview with uh, Rock from uh, House of Skelta, and um, you know opened a line of communication, and now here we are. Right, absolutely, man. That's, that's what brought me to you guys, and I didn't even know that you did business with so many people. I've done business with like Kung Fu Vampire, like Twisted. You know what I'm saying? All those guys are family, man. All those guys are like brothers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Word. Yeah. It's a small world, you know what I mean? It it's is, a small man. Small world. It is only, it's only a matter of time and only right that this actually happened. And you know Tom, too. Right. It's just crazy. It is a small world, man. For real. Right. Right. Small industry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From the fans' perspective, they think it's a big fucking thing, but it's actually a very small network of people who know each other. And don't even realize they know each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no, it's, it's very that, true. Now that you know some dudes that I know, I'm like, all right, you are. Right. If you know this cat, you must be all right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, and that, and that's why it's very important, I say, too, for people to conduct their business properly because a lot of people look at it like kind of like you said, but from the outside looking in, it looks like this massive industry. But at the end of the day, everybody kind of knows each other or knows someone who knows the next person, you know what I mean? And word gets around fast, so that's why it's important for people to handle their business properly. Absolutely. Absolutely. For artists, for everybody, you know what I'm saying? For artists, for like, there's so many people that are... Um, you know, that, 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 that I've worked with, that, that I've worked with people that I want to work with. Like, I want to work with somebody like Rock and Swan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe it hasn't happened now. You know what I mean? Maybe, that, maybe that's the connection that I needed to actually get that working forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, shout out to Jake Palumbo also. He um, worked with Rock also. And I might be working with him right now also. Say, who, um, who did you say, sorry? Huh? Who did you say, sorry? Uh, Jake Palumbo. Oh, word. Word, you, you, you know his name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he, he's, he's, real, he's real deep in the hip-hop, bro. He does some, some fucking work with some massive guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm just still getting my feet wet, you know? Like, I'm out here, but it's still, I'm still a small fish in a big fucking pond, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Word. But you definitely, you definitely since, um, you know, signing with M&E, you, you, your name has definitely uh, been ringing bells, though, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, you know what? More than I know, man, because I didn't know that a lot of dudes. Um, I was talking to this this, this one fellow. I was asking him some information about something. He texted me this other dude who I didn't even think would ever even fucking know me in a million years. And he's like, Yeah, I know your name. I was like, Everybody know your name. Yeah, man. 
man. You guys should have told me that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> your, name, your name's been ringing be bells. And the, the one thing I think, too, is that... um. You have a very distinct name. Like, you have one of those names, like, once I seen it on paper, you know what I mean? I can't even remember which right. track of yours I heard first. It might have been a joint with you and Twisted on it. Or it might have... It was probably a joint with you and Twisted. And then I know I heard of uh, you and the Real Wolf joint, right? And then over time. But right. it's just it's one of those things that, like, the first time I heard you... Plus, on record, you're distinct. But you got just such a distinct name. It's like, once you've heard of you, you don't forget you. You know what I mean? Opposed to some of these cats that got, like... What at, you know, Lil this or what at, you know, a lot of generic <laughs> right. rap names out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you got right. a very st- distinct name. So it's like, you know, once someone's heard of you, it's almost like one of those names they don't forget. Right. I, I, I guess it works in my favor, yeah. I mean, I always thought it was kind of wrong. I'm like, oh man, my brother's going to be struggling to say that shit. But you're right, so you, you, you may be the third or fourth person of a professional stature who told me that shit. Yo, know, that's a good name, bro. You know what I'm that shit has a ring to it, you know what I mean? And then when the crowd is screaming the shit like the heck, like, you know, it's fucking Not bad. Yeah, how did, how did you acquire the name Lex the Hex Master anyways? Well, it was actually Lex Master that first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, the trademark, I wasn't able to use that name upon signing to the company. Yeah. I wasn't able to use that fucking name, so they was like, yo, I was like, I don't want to change my name to some totally different shit. You know what I'm saying? And be somebody completely new, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. uh, I believe the name was maybe was Jamie Madrock. They were like, yo, throw the X in the middle of it. And it'll be the same name, it'll just be a little twist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't know, man. I think I'm talking like three, four weeks. We went back and forth about that shit. I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nah, man. That's, um, I thought it was black. You know what I mean? But I was like, you know what? Let's try it out. And it's worked. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was a genius move. But I had to make that suggestion. And we fucking did it. Yeah, word, man. That's crazy. It's it's crazy how that kind of shit happens sometimes, eh? Right. Yeah, but it's like right. almost. You know, as an artist, you're like, oh man, I don't want, I don't want to, you know, what I'm saying, I'm throwing out to the label. You know what I'm saying? You get that mentality in your mind upon coming into the industry, like, oh, they're gonna start controlling me, shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't um, want to compromise you know? what you feel like you already are. Right, but you know, sometimes it is good to shut the fuck up and listen. Yeah. In some instances, not in every instance, but in some instances, it is sometimes good to shut the fuck up. And you know what I'm saying? And listen to some people who do know what they're talking about. Yeah. Not that everybody knows what they're talking about. There are people who's like, yo, listen, man, I know, I know this shit is going to work. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I put my faith in them, and it ended up. Okay? And then we came a long way. Yeah. And I was already painting my face before I was with the label. You know what I'm saying? But I was kind of how they discovered me, because I was like the only person at the time in New York who was actually doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? And actually making any noise about it. And, um, you know, next time like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? You sound like New York, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't necessarily a juggling rapper. You know what I'm saying? I come from the hip hop era. Yeah. You know? This is how I become fans of people like, like Elton Skelter. You know what I'm saying? Flatlines and fucking rough and shit and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm fans of those guys. You know? Like, our, our version of the wicked shit was fucking flatlines and great figures and shit like that. You know what I mean? When, you know, in the other regions, some people's idea of the wicked shit was, you know, ICP, Twisted, you know what I mean? Yeah. But a lot of that shit didn't really reach New York too hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And vice versa. Vice versa. You know what I'm saying? So, but it still all comes full circle because you know what? It's all underground shit and it's all wicked shit. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, man. And so coming up, like, in Queens, too, that I'm guessing, because uh, kind of like you just said, like, ICP and, like, the Juggalo movement didn't quite reach its arms out to New York as strongly as, you know, obviously some of the homegrown rap. So, like, when you were coming up, was that, were those the dudes you were bumping that, like, that really put the fire in you to want to rap? Like, the boot camp click dudes and that shit? Uh, yeah, I fuck with boot camp click hard. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm the youngest of two boys, so I got an older brother who was like super fucking hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't, I couldn't work for him. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, and that's what he listened to. So I listened to what he listened to. I couldn't buy no rap taste back then. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I had to listen to fucking, I had to listen to Mob Deep and all that shit. And then Nas, it was written, you know what I'm saying? And fucking, you know, Dark and Hell is Hot and shit like that. And uh, I was like, eventually I started liking this shit. You know what I'm saying? As you, I feel like as you grow in life, you know what I'm saying? From, from, um, Youth to adolescence to fucking adulthood, different music, um, different music appeals to you more. Different music applies to you, I guess, a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, we all come from the fucking MC Hammer days. I wish a motherfucker would say they wasn't killing MC Hammer. I wish a motherfucker would say they wasn't killing MC Hammer back in the days. You know what I'm saying? 
Word. <laughs> <laughs> but you grow up more. Real shit, right? Am I right? Or yeah. More? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? But as you grow up, you know what I'm saying? You get to the lights a little bit more. You get to that, that, you get to that music that appeals more to you. Maybe you're a little bit more of a street guy. And you're going to be a little bit shit like this tank. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that shit, you can relate to that shit a little bit more. Right? Yeah. You're going to get into shit like fucking DMX and shit like that. And fucking Nas. Nice. They start talking about shit that you're going through now. I mean, being black, growing up, growing up in Queens in New York City in the, in the 80s, well, I would say the 90s. Not the 80s, I was born in the 80s. But uh, in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was very real. Although a lot of the rappers were really just kind of storytellers, the, the story that they were telling and the message that they were conveying was very real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you you, you kind of can't relate to motherfucking MC Hammer no more or fucking, you know, uh, Vanilla Ice and all that fucking Backstreet Boy shit. You know what I mean? You can't really do that shit no more. So it's like, these niggas are talking about my life right now. They're not writing the story of my fucking life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and this is where hip-hop comes in because hip-hop is not a form of music. Hip-hop is a fucking lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So you start dressing fucking hip-hop. You know, you start... Walking and talking fucking hip hop, you know what I'm saying? He's like tagging up walls and shit, hip hop shit, you know? And um and that's what that's what happened with with with, with me, man. So I was I was influenced heavily by um by New York rap. Not so much the uh West Coast rap until I got a little bit older. Yeah. And got into the whole, you know, into Tupac and stuff like that. Like I'm not a I'm not a fuck of a lot. I didn't really start listening to Tupac until he was already dead. Yeah. Man. Or you know, I've been a Tupac fan forever. Like I didn't start listening to anything he was dead, and I love his fucking music. Yeah. And then I would love to have seen a dude like that live, or been in the studio with a cat like that. You know? Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's that's, that's the life. That's I guess that's my own answer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, actually, kind of one thing you said, too, about Pac, it actually, you know, I think that's the same case for a lot of people, and it's, like, kind of the same thing that's happened with Nipsey as well, right? Like, he was very respected on the West Coast. But I think maybe, you know, throughout the rest of, you know, the States and even here in Canada, he was known, but he wasn't, like, that dude, that dude. Like, he was in L.A., and it kind of took for his uh, untimely passing for people to really, like, be like, yo, this dude was a genius. Right, no, he was really good, and, I, and I'm not going to say that I was a huge Nipsey Hussle fan. Yeah. I'm not going to say I ever bought a Nipsey Hussle record, you know what I'm saying? But um, I had a homeboy, man, um, in my hood, and he was fucking love Nipsey Hussle. And when he was done with all, we would rock to it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's some dudes, there's some dudes that's word up on that dude that will tell you, like, yo, listen, man, cut that shit off for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cut that shit off. But Nipsey shit, I think, oh, nah, this shit is all right. This shit is kind of cruising, you know what I'm saying? This shit is cool. You know what I mean? And, and to, that, to that extent, and, um, yeah, you get a lot of people who, who kind of jump on the bandwagon after, after these things happen to people. Like, you know, I would be a liar if I said that I was a huge Tupac fan. He died in 96. I was, like, in the fifth, sixth grade. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't living the thug life. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. So, motherfuckers need to chill with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Let these people rest and appreciate their art for what it was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then just, 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 just leave it like that. All these extra Tupac records and, now they got other niggas on the songs now, and I'm like, destroying that man's legacy. Yeah, you know? it gets super corny once it gets to that point. Right! You know, so I think the last record that Tupac actually legitimately worked on in this, before that happened to him, I think it might have been Mac and Fellas. Yeah, I would say that. The last record that he actually completed, and I think that's his best fucking record to be. A lot of people do, actually, too. And that's, like, that's a debate I get a lot. Like, um, because I personally, I really like... I don't know, they're all good for different reasons, but I think Me Against the World is really dope, too. I think it gets kind of overlooked a lot. Yeah, I think it gets overlooked a lot. And even his first album, Apocalypse Now. He seemed a little uninstalled on Macabre. He seemed a little... I mean, he was always wild, but he seemed a little bit... He seemed like he was really free on that album. Not wild, he seemed like he was really free on that album. That's true. Yeah, he w- he didn't try to appeal to nobody on that album. Like he just went in there, right. pissed off, and did what he felt like doing. Right. Yeah, and that, I, I think that's why I like that album. Not not that it's the best. Not that everybody should feel like Mac Miller is the best fucking album. I'm saying it's just my favorite album. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. But I, I would say a lot of people agree with you. I think a lot of people say Machiavelli or I, All Eyes on Me would be one of it, would be his best. I I knew this kid in in junior high school. The one kid that I knew that had. 
They yeah. used to walk around with Panasonic radio playing the tape all fucking day long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One kid, a kid named Arthur, he was a fucking blind haired fucking green eyed straight up white boy, dude. <laughs> he fucking loved Tupac, bro. <laughs> Never forget that kid. He fucking loved Tupac. You know what I'm saying? But when we, we over here wasn't really, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's that West Coast shit. You know what I'm saying? But this kid loved fucking Tupac. <laughs> Shout outs to Arthur, man. You know what I'm saying? Spreading that Tupac. <laughs> Damn, man. I think it was, he was like, yo, nah, they ain't told me to turn my Tupac shit off. Like, and he wasn't even street. He was like, he was like in the suburbs and shit, like mom and dad and shit. You know what I'm saying? He'd sit down and eat dinner and shit. Of course, his parents hated that he lived in the fucking Tupac, but he didn't give a fuck. You know? <laughs> yeah, Tupac had a very, wide, a very large white audience. You know what I'm saying? Had yeah. Had most rappers, too. Had most rappers. Yeah, one hundred percent. And actually, so I'm kind of curious as well too. Like, with your upbringing being in Queens, New York, you know, and I would say like you know Queens, Queens is uh, well respected for birthing. I would say it's the best lyricist in hip hop, and that's no disrespect to any other place. But even in New York, you know, you got you know Brooklyn, you know, you got you got lyricists everywhere. But, you know, there's a certain swag to certain pl parts, like Harlem, and, you know what I mean? There's lyricists everywhere, but, like, Queens all the way from, you know, you got Shan, LL, you got Run DMC, and then, you you know, you got, the, like, the Golden Age dudes, like your Nas's, Tragedy Qaddafi's, Cormega's, Prodigy's, like, you know, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on of lyrical Queens dudes, right? Like, it's very poetic there. But I'm just kind of curious, with that kind of upbringing around you, what kind of made you veer and uh, go the direction you went with, like, the face painting and the very Juggalo-esque type uh, approach? Like, visually. Uh, visually? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it, was, it, was more, it was more artistic, more theatrical. You know what I'm saying? At first. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm in New York City you can find a fucking a dude who raps, find 10 motherfuckers that rap on each street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and me, I'm, 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 I'm a very theatrical person. If you ever meet me, I'm a very animated person. You know what I'm saying? I speak up people my hands, all that cool shit. You know what I'm saying? As a kid, I always want stories. And, you know what I'm saying? I wrote comic books and cool shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I was always a very visual person. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know what? I want to give people something that they could have removed. I want to be something that I'm saying there's a whole story behind the face thing, which we can get into at a different time. But um, want to be something that you know what I'm saying. And as I started pushing the music more and more and more, you know, these kids, you know, they started gravitating to it. Yeah, gravitating to it. You know what I'm saying? And sharing it and liking it, showing it so much fucking love, and it was crazy. You know what I'm saying I had never really known where to chuck them. Really? Yeah. So you kind of just like. So you kind of actually just like did it artistically yourself, and then kind of found that there was this subculture behind what you were doing, right. and and got embraced by them. And, 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 and I would say that they embraced me. Yeah. But, uh, and they, they brought me in that shit with mad love. Oh, that's and, incredible. And I'm like, yo, this is something. This is something I can fuck with. You know what I'm saying, this is something I can get with. Like, this is fucking love. Is it's real. Like the Juggalo community is like hip hop in the '90s. You know what I'm saying, like, they want to buy. You know what I'm saying, they want to buy T-shirts. You know what I'm saying, they, they don't want to download it and stream it and all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying, they want to meet the artist. They want to smoke a cigarette with you. They yeah. Want to drink with you. You know what I'm saying, like. And, and, and it just loves, like, I can hang out in the fucking line with a bunch of juggalos all fucking night and get totally wasted and know that I'm absolutely fucking fine. Yeah, there, it's, not like that, it's not like that in other different parts of the industry. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, the juggalos are one of the most incredible um, cult followings and cultures within hip-hop music. Like, they're... They're, they're unlike anything else. Just, like, the dedication and stride they have for... You know what I mean? Like, they... 
it, it's very hard to explain and it's very unparalleled, unmatched. Like a lot of underground labels and movements, you know, like Tech Nine has his technicians and, you know, like the Rhyme right. Sayers has a big following. I mean, even Tech Nine comes out of his whole juggle. Yeah, that's true, actually. He, yeah, he comes from that same vein, yeah. Yeah, like, they, like they, Juggalos was very instrumental in Tech Nine's career, taking off his. That's very okay. true, actually. Now that you say that, and I never really yeah. thought of it like that, but now looking back at his career, like, you're right. Like, in the early days, when he was rocking the face paint and stuff and the crazy red hair sticking up and stuff like that, like, yeah. you, and he was yeah. doing, like, gathering other juggalos and shit back then, too, wasn't he? He did, he did the gathering of juggalos this year. Yeah? Word, eh? Yeah, you know, yeah. I believe so. Yeah, so I was told he was going to be here, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, another person that I feel came for the juggalo movement also was Eminem. Yeah. Yeah. If you listen to Eminem, Eminem is a hardcore rapper first. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, it's and actually... And he's been open. He's, he's open by... You know what I'm saying? Sorry, say that again. I said he's open by... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was at those shows. He was out there with the juggalo yeah, when we... You know, shit went south. And, you know, shit got crazy, but... A lot of motherfuckers came. You know what I'm saying? Was, a lot of motherfuckers got their careers birthed from this fucking down-ass, loyal-ass fucking movement, dog. Yeah, that's okay? true. Because even when we, when we interviewed Twisted, um, I think it was Monoxide in the interview, but he said uh, he tried to get Eminem a record deal back before... Uh, before... Um, Dr. Dre and shit, he tried to get him a deal at Psycho, uh, Psychopath Records. Oh, I wasn't around for that. No, but I'm just saying, like, it just shows, like, you know, like, it's just funny that you said that, because that actually, like, Eminem directly came from kind of that vein. Like, he was rocking with the yeah. Twisted Dudes in the early days, and they, like, yeah, he said in the interview, he tried to get them down with ICP before, obviously, the beef happened and shit, but... And then the great, the great thing now... And then so, um, so I was curious too, like with, um, you know, I think that's pretty cool actually, like how you kind of developed your image without even knowing what a juggalo is and then it just kind of, their culture embraced you and it kind of, it kind of came into place. That's really dope. That's really right. dope. And I felt like if I, I felt like if I would have tried to pander too much and try to be Mr. Super Juggalo, that would have just been being a fucking culture culture. Yeah, exactly. It's cool though how it like, you know. Cause you're right, like on on lyrically, your music is different than a lot of juggalo music. Like you're more in the vein of like hip hop, you know, like kind of like the cla like you know, like a you, like a street hip hop artist from New York. Like you really embody that kind of spirit in you. So um, yeah, I just I think it's really cool how like you know you kind of just did it to set yourself aside, and then lo and behold, you ended up becoming one of the you know forerunners of this culture we call juggalo. Like you know. It's just, it's cool, man. It's cool. It's really cool how, like, uh, your path will almost decide itself for you sometimes. Right. Right. Absolutely. Gotta go with that. Man, I'm like, you never know what you can have. And then, uh, that's why I love these kids. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what Yeah, man. So almost all day on the social media and shit, baby. The very person is very intimate, um, very intimate culture. Yeah. Yeah, man, and very loyal too. So it's like it, it's um it's a blessing to be able to be uh you know appreciated amongst that culture because you know I I don't I can't think of another fan base in hip hop that's as loyal as the Juggalos. Right. But um. So, they love you. They love you. They hate you. 
Yeah, if they hate you, I feel bad for you. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I, I, I've known a few juggalos in my life, even growing up, and they were some of the craziest dudes I knew. Like, they're, they were nice dudes, but you, if they weren't the guys I wanted a problem with, necessarily. Right. Right. No fucking juggalos. <laughs> but, um, so actually, that being said, though, too, talking about the juggalos and stuff, like, how did, um... The whole deal with MNE and you, like, how did you hook up with Twisted to begin with? Well, um, I mean, like you say, like, trust and destiny and shit, man. I, I'm literally, like, fucking with the song a couple times. A fan. And, um, shit, they fucking inboxed me on Twitter. Word. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like your shit, you know, blah, 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 you know, all that shit. And, um, chemistry just kind of it just worked like right away when you went out and met the dudes it was like oh yeah like this chemistry's here this is perfect So since you've got down with MNE, like what would what would you say kind of is like your biggest your biggest moment to yourself, like in your career, like as an artist, like your biggest wow moment since signing with them, whether it's like someone you've met or just an opportunity you've had to you know do a song with someone or you know a show you rock, like what like what to you is like the most dearest like damn like moment. I mean, it, you know, it, it, you know, it, it, it keeps up being. I mean, going on my first tour, I was like, oh, shit, I'm on tour. Yeah. You know what I'm they, going, they going to Canada, I was like, oh, shit, I'm in Canada. You know what I'm saying? So I got this, this, this song I had cut where, uh, with a Chris Rivers, I looked over her, you heard it, I'm sure you heard it, Chris Rivers. Yeah. And, um, and, and Billy Dan from M.O.P., you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, I got a song with fucking M.O.P., those are some of my favorite guys. You know, it's just like, I have to close on, you know, winning awards and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just being able to work, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a person who's never stopped working. Yeah. Like, uh, huh? I just say, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm one of the two. I, I never stop working. I mean, in the past, uh, two, three years, man, I've put out like, like, like nine projects. And, uh, and now I'm just learning, I'm, I'm, I'm learning the game more, just learning how to, you know, not be so dependent. Right? I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like a child. Yeah. with each one the next accomplishment is kind of you know it's it's taught the last thing and it's just continuously moving forward and so it's like there's a lot of them along the way but it's like they're all intri integral pieces in the progression Word, man. 
And um, so was that was the Beyond Redemption the last album, the like official studio album that you put out then? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what what do we got? We're another one right now. That's what I was just gonna say because that was uh back in 2017, right? Yeah. Word. And I know you put out a few mixtapes in between. I could rap all day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can rap all fucking day, but, you know, like you said, running the game, running the patience, you know what I'm saying? Um, running the business, running the house you know what I'm saying? Like, how do I want to look? I need to reinvent myself. I can't give them the same fucking album for a third time. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. Um, I need to do something totally different. I need to go, I need to go hear music. You know what I'm saying? I need to go live life again as like a regular person because when you're surrounded by industry, when you're surrounded by the tour people, when you're surrounded by the band, they're telling you how dope you are, they're telling you how you are, they tell you how ill you are. You don't really hear music anymore. You just kind of make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you just think like you just think it's dope because everybody's just telling you that you're fucking dope. I don't want to fall into that kind of category. So it's like, oh, it was all right. You know what I'm saying? But so it wasn't all right like the other ones. So that's why I just like some time off of just like don't want shit out, don't want shit out, don't want shit out. You oversaturate the market also. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, another Lex album. Oh, that's cool. What yeah. else you got? No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think it's actually really important in today's uh, age because you have a lot of artists who are kind of part of this cookie cutter mold where a lot of them sound alike. But then these are the artists that are flooding and oversaturating the market too. Like, n- no shot to them, but like QC, Quality Control, just put out the new album. And it's like 36 songs. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean? It's like, and these are already the dudes who like, you know... Every Migos dude is putting out like a solo album each year, and the Migos has an album out, and Yachty's got an album. It's like these dudes are just consistently throwing out so much music, but in my personal opinion, very little of it is great music. The majority of it is just average, you know what I mean? And really what they're doing is just saturating the market, and I think it's going to hurt them. I think it's the same thing that happened to Lil Wayne back in the mixtape era, where he just oversaturated himself way too much by getting on every mixtape, every feature, every song, and, you know, your creative juices eventually run out, you know what I mean? And if you burn it all up in a run of just being consistently out on everything, I think you get to a point where either A, people are just kind of tired of it, or B, you tire yourself out. Right, right. Right. I mean, you usually get supposed to be art imitating life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you're constantly in character, you're constantly, you know what I'm saying? Like, in music mode, constantly in superstar mode, then that's not really life anymore. Because people get it twisted, this is, not, this is not really real life. Yeah. This is entertainment. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the real street guys are the coolest fucking guys you ever meet in your life. Because <clears throat> they already know what time it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like me. I don't jump into my nobody's rap beef. I know what real beef is like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't come. I, I'm, not, I'm not putting in all this work. I'm not doing all that shit. You know what I'm saying? To, to fucking to go right back to that bullshit. To Fuck go back. I want to get as far away from that shit as possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So once you just become the character, and there is no real life anymore, there is no, there's no identifying with oneself anymore. And the music becomes bullshit. Yeah. It becomes absolute bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you got. You can think about popping bottles all day. You can think about drinking and smoking and fucking bitches all day. Like an artist. Yeah. I don't want to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Personally. Yeah. But you have some kind of have some kind of depth. Have some kind of, and then you get guys who are known for the street shit. You know what I'm saying? Start living the industry life. Only live the industry life, but they still talk about street shit. And nobody believes it anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not gonna be a millionaire. You're talking about selling crack. And, that, well, that's, and shit. Yeah, to me, like, that uh, was kind of the downfall to 50 Cent, in my opinion. Like, it got mm-hmm. to a point where it was like, all right, man, like, I get it. Like, let, let's hear about what you your life is like dog. now. Yeah, you live, in, you, live in, you live in a bubble, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You haven't, been, you haven't been to the supermarket in years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, don't hit me with that fucking, you still out here in the street shit. It's impossible. Yeah, exactly. Like... Yeah, it's once again, it's not that he's fake. It's not. A, it's just in like, You can't walk down the street and nobody knows who he is. Exactly. Yeah, you get people who freak out. Like Eminem's like, people say Eminem's like a freak out. Like he's like a recluse. Like he fucking doesn't do anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He hates it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why maybe when maybe when face paint is a is a is a is a is a plus because at least I can walk down the street as a regular person. And nobody knows who I am. Well, 
that's what I was just gonna say to you actually too is um it's funny you said that I was actually just gonna li after you brought up Eminem legitimately I was gonna ask you that but do you think that is a kind of a blessing to you know having more you know having more of a disguised actual image as an artist that when you want your personal space all you got to do is not put the paint on and you can go outside and you're just you I believe it is because I can, I can go, you know, I, I've been in venues at shows that we're on tour for and sat there and watched the whole show in the crowd, everybody else, and nobody knew who I was. I'll be at the bar, I'll be at the bar talking to a chick for like two hours. That's actually happened to me before. I was sitting there talking to the chick, harmless, harmless, talking to the chick for like two hours. And I get up to go to the bathroom and come back. And she's like, are you Lex? I'm like, what make you act that? She's like, because those girls over there saying that you're Lex. Oh, shit. Okay, I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we was already chopping up, though. We was already vibing. So that was a cool chick because she was vibing with me even though she didn't know that. Even though I was just an ordinary fucking black dude. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That, that still vibing, so it was cool. You know what I mean? Especially as an artist, too, it's always hard to read people who you're meeting for the first time when right. you are an artist. So that right there is like your right. perfect way to meet a good girl. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay. You're cool with mm -hmm. me just being me, so, all right. Right. Yeah. Right. Now it's like, it's a plus now. You know? Like, oh, shit, and you're somebody, and you're cool and shit, and you're like that, dude. Yeah. But I never, I don't know if I ever actually accepted that though. Like, people tell me that shit all the time. But, yo, you do you famous, though? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to accept that shit. That's a black word. Famous. Yeah. That word was played out when Michael Jackson was famous. Yeah. Eminem is famous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a performer. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if I would want Michael Jackson's life. I don't even know if I would want Eminem's life. No, man. That's too much. Like, that's too much. Like, to not be able to do anything, it's like... You know, and it's it's at a point where that, where it's like, you know, you almost can't even, like, you just, you can't do shit, man. It's like, you can't even, like, you want to get out of the house and do shows, but you can hardly even do shows because your fucking rider is so big, you know what I mean? For shows that, you you know, you're getting paid, like, what? Like, what's Eminem get? Like, I think, like, a million a show or close to. You know what I mean? So, there's only so many people who are offering you that money to begin with for a show. So, you probably get, like, maybe what? Like, I don't know. How many shows a year, right? Probably under 50. And then each, right. each of those shows, it's like, then you got, like, a manager like Paul who's selecting through them, picking things because you're such a huge celebrity that things have to match your image. If things don't look right for your image, you know what I mean, or who you are, you don't accept them. Right. So it's like, even, like, the one thing you could go out and do is, like, even limited in itself. Right, I can't even buy my own fucking fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I gotta, this guy gotta buy my fucking pants. You know how awkward that is? Yeah. Like, they look shreddies on. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, man. I'm fucking thinking about my own fucking drugs. I can't go to fucking Thanksgiving at my family's house. Yeah. Like, that's nuts. You know what I'm saying? I can't go to a fucking 4th of July barbecue. I know these are all American. You know all these days I'm talking about, though. Yeah. I can't go to a fucking family barbecue with shit, man. It's crazy. Yeah, man, I don't... This guy sitting in the fucking house and they fester and they fucking do drugs and shit, you know? Yeah, man. I honestly, I feel bad for people who get to a level of celebrity like that. Like, once you're like Michael Jackson, like Eminem, like, where you literally have to just become a recluse, like, I feel bad for those people, man. Like, that ain't no way to live life. And, it, and the art suffers because of it. Right. I agree. I agree. But um, one thing I did want to ask you as yeah. well, too, because, like, like I said, uh, you know, one, someone you you know, obviously, uh, Kung Fu Vampire, we had him on the show. But uh, he kind of talked to us in the interview with him um, about the reason he stopped using face paint. And, um, you know, because he just kind of felt like it pigeonholed him into a specific thing. And that, you know, people outside of the juggalo culture and people who are familiar with that kind of culture almost, you know, pigeonholed him in that and almost didn't give his music the fair chance. I was just curious if you ever feel the same way about your your music and your image. I hear I hear people say stuff like that, but I I I I, I, I disagree a hundred percent. Yeah. I disagree a hundred percent. I just did a show uh what was that week before last uh Lost Boys. Yeah. Cheeks. In 
Eastside. Yeah. Uh, in New York City, out here in um, in um, in Brooklyn, and uh, people were fascinated by it. Yeah. People were people people were actually attracted to it. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta remember, New York City knows nothing about the jungle culture. Yeah. So to them, it's something brand fucking new. <laughs> to them, it's something that just nobody else is doing. I was in a movie from there a couple months ago for a song I did for John Frank for a movie. Shout to Blood Mix that's coming out Thanksgiving. I did the John. I did a song. For Yeah. People were fucking amazed by it. People wanted to take pictures with me. Then people wanted to know about my music. Then people wanted to know about my career. Then people wanted to know what I was doing. Yeah. Because you stand out, right? It's different. Not the, ten, not the ten other rappers who were there on the same fucking um on the same fucking soundtrack. Yeah. People wanted to know who the fuck I was. Yeah. So I, I, I disagree 100%. Okay. And I understand where he's coming from. Yeah. Kung Fu, because Kung Fu is a very brilliant man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you ever actually sat down and, and, and had, had lunch with Kung Fu. He's a very brilliant man. I understand exactly what he means. But uh, it all depends on what direction you're trying to go. Yeah. And in this hip hop world, and then, and then, uh, the, 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 shit, if I jump out on stage with fucking who can't play because some shit like that, I'm like, yo, who's that fucking guy? You know what I'm saying? That's true. Or not even who can't quit. Let's just say I jumped out with a whole bunch of fucking rappers who were like a million times even doper than I was. Right? You're the one who's going to stand out, though, because, you know, people are going to be like, well, who's that dude with the paint? They're not going to remember the nigga with the super fucking illest bars they ever heard in their motherfucking life. Yeah. They're going to remember the nigga with the paint on. Yeah, that's facts. What? That's facts, man. And that's how I feel about it. And you know what? When Eminem first hit New York City... When 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 Hi My Name Is came out, yes, I thought the song. I personally thought that song was fast, but uh, and, and being a white boy, I think made more people listen to him. Yeah, because you got your Vanilla Ices, you got the other people named Milk or some shit like that, who were like absolutely terrible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Marky Mark and all these dudes, even Bud Bundy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who, like, Absolutely, like the streets was not feeling them, and then Eminem came out being a white boy, and then had the nerve to be fucking dope as fuck. Yeah, you gotta respect it now. Yeah, regardless of what he looks like. Because if Eminem was to be a part of Wu Tang, he's gonna be the white boy in Wu Tang. Yeah. If Eminem was a part of fucking Boot Camp Click, he's the white boy in Boot Camp. Oh, you know the white boy? Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna stand out. That's his face paint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the fact that he's contending with actual hip hop artists. You know what I'm saying? If I if I plan on just being in a juggler lane, I just doing songs with other juggler artists, then yeah, I'm gonna get lost in the I'm gonna get lost in the sauce. I'm gonna get lost in the crowd of other motherfuckers think they they see. Of course. But if I wanna if I wanna start competing on these songs with these big names, like Chris Rivers. Yeah. Like Billy Dan, those are big fucking names. No one's ever done that. Yeah. No one's ever done that. And actually had bars. Yeah. Well, and I think, and that's one thing I think is dope, too, because you definitely, though, like, image-wise and though culturally you fit in with that culture and they embrace you, and, you know, the image, you know, it goes, it coincides with it, you do represent, like, that street rap, you know, like that, that New York hip-hop shit that I love, you know what I mean? I've always been, a, New York's always been my favorite um, area of hip-hop music. And so, you know, you just, right. when someone's got that authentic New York sound, like, you just hear it in them, you know what I mean? Whether it's undertone with different influences and styles, you just, but you kind of embody that. And that's one thing I kind of like about you that sets you apart from a lot of your other kind of contemporaries that are, you know, in the same kind of um, lane as you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I got, I got you 100%. I got you 100%. And that's why I never, I never, I, I tried to not, um, like I said, I don't want to be super juggalo guy because then I doubt we think. Yeah. And the juggalos are like, oh, it's just a motherfucker trying to take our money. It's just a motherfucker that twists the tire and just throwing them out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which label, labels do that. Labels just try and things and like, yeah, he's dope, like him. Yeah. And it doesn't work out. Yeah. Because it's not real. It's not organic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a motherfucker can walk up to me at a show. I ain't got no security with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm right there in the smoking section. Yep. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, look, this is a real fucking dude. 
I'm not no real dude, man. I'm a, I'm a human being. I sense danger, I react to fucking danger. I sense cool shit and respect, I react to cool shit and respect. And all, anybody who's ever met me can say the same exact shit. Like, Lex, fucking down to earth, cool fucking guy. Yeah. Maybe it's hurt me in time, because I've been told by certain individuals, like, yo, you can't be hanging out with people, it's gonna hurt your brand. I'm like, yo, man, what else I'm supposed to do, man? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to be around the people, man. The people need to... I want to have to charge a nigga $150 to come and shake my hand and I sign his fucking, his fucking hat and take a picture with him and then he just keeps on walking. Fuck that shit. I, ain't, I, I wouldn't pay a motherfucker $150 to meet me. No, and you know what? It goes a long way with the fans, too, especially while you're still building your brand and establishing yourself. It goes a long way right. to be the dude who goes out... And hangs out in the crowd after his set or before his set and, you know, watches other performers and just mingles with the fans and stuff. Or, like, stands at his own merch table and sells, the, you know, stands there while people buy merch and talks to them. Like, it goes a long way, man. People remember that. And um, I think it just makes that intimate connection with uh, what I would already call a pretty, lo you know, um, loyal fan base. Like, someone like yourself. And um, it just makes it so much more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Intimate. And, and it makes these people feel more in one with you. And I just think the support's even heavier. And I think that's one thing a lot of artists um, kind of miss out on. Is that they they almost inflate their ego or whatever it is. Or they just want to make money, whatever it is. But they, you know, they don't come out and hang out at the shows. They don't, you know, they don't sit at the merch table. They, they charge for the meet and greet and stuff. And, um... I think that I think that's a huge mistake for a lot of artists because once people meet you, you know, and get to shake your hand or have a cigarette with you or have a conversation with you just on some people shit, even though they're your fan, they become that much more of your fan because they're like, yo, I met this guy and he was the humblest dude. He was so cool. Like, you know what I mean? And it makes them really appreciate the music more. And I think it just builds a more intimate connection with your fans. And over the long run, I think it's very beneficial. But I find a lot of artists don't really do it anymore. I mean, and you know what? I want to go have drinks at the bar. I do. You know what I'm saying? I want to go smoke cigarettes. I have some. I smoke a lot. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm an and advocate for so cigarette much. smoking. And I know exactly what you're saying. And and, 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 I'm, and I'm, I'm just piggybacking off of that. Just, and, just, and just stating the fact that I'm not doing that for the people to be like, oh, Lexus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I... Like I told you, I can hang out in the venue for the most part of the night and nobody knows anything about who the fuck I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it's crazy when somebody actually recognizes me and it's like, yo, keep it alone. And I'm saying, that ain't like they know something. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shit, I'm hanging out with Lex and then people lose their shit. Yeah. You know, but um, still, like, hey, yo, it's, it's, just, it's about enjoying it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're only going to be new one. Yep. Yeah. And it's only going to be so much time goes by until you're like, you know what? I don't want to do this. So enjoy it. So meet the people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Play Superstar. Hang out. Have drinks. Don't let people buy you drinks. Why not? Yeah. It's okay. They're people too. People work all week. Come out to have a good time in real life. You know what I'm saying? They come out to have a good time with their friends. And most of these people, do are some of the best people that you'll meet in your fucking life. Yeah. Word. Word up, man. And um, so I know we're like, we're nearing. Uh, it's crazy, man. This has actually flown by. But we're nearing an hour. And um, the show's only an hour long, so I would like to play at least one of your songs on the show. Um, so before we wrap it up, though, um, just tell the people, because you said you got an album in the works, right? Yeah. So is there anything you could Not tell us title. about it, or is everything kind of under wraps at the moment? Yeah, like, it's still in, it's in, like, blueprint stage right now. Like, it's so not established right now, but it's, 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 um, it's coming along. I'm trying to get it out by early next year. Okay, cool. Sometime before before spring. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, next place you can catch me at is uh, Gore Fest out in Denver at the Roxy with, with my LSD homie. Uh, shout out to G Moski. That's his, that's his birthday weekend. Um, and after that, we got 656 Fest up in Maine. Shout out to those homies. A lot of people's going to be there. Havoc's going to be here. Motherfucker Swiss is going to be there. It's going to be a bunch of folks. Um, and then after that, we're going to do. Uh, I got, I got a jacket in the museum. And next year I'm going to, um, I'm going back to Europe to do um, uh, another couple shows. And I'm, I plan to do a tour of probably Czech Republic into Germany. Word. So look out for all that shit. Yeah. Dope, dope. I'm out here, man. <laughs> I'm out here, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, that's it. If they're looking for me, they can find me like that. Out a 
actually, we'll get into, uh, we'll play that track right uh, when we finish this to end the show off as well, too. Um, before we do wrap it up, though, there is one question I'd like to ask you that we ask all of our uh, interviewees. Um, and actually, I'm, re- I'm really excited uh, to ask you this one because there's just certain artists that you that you get the feel. You're like, oh, the, they'll knock this one out the park. Um, I kind of got that feeling about you. But, but um, you're, you're familiar with Mortal Kombat, obviously, right? Absolutely. All right. So if you could translate, if your lyrical style had to translate into a Mortal Kombat finishing move of your choice, what would it do to your opponent? Yeah. Yeah. Word. Word. All right, my man. Anything Raven does. Say what? Anything Raven does. Anything Raven does. Word. Hey. Anything Raven does. Raven is my guy. You know what I'm saying? And then just his power. He's a god. Like Raven is always the motherfucking guy. But my finishing move, a motherfucker's head will explode. Word. Word. All right. I listen to that shit and nod at your fucking head so fucking hard. Oh, oh my god. Word, man. All right, well, thank you very much for your time, Lex. I appreciate it. All right, thank you, man. Yeah, time this slow by, too, man. It's been good kicking in with you, man. I feel like I wasn't even doing it, and if you feel like I was just, like, we were just kind of chopping it up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I think that makes for a good interview, man.